Welcome back everyone where I connect the dots between Bible prophecy and current events. My name is Frank DeMore. I'm the author of the book, The Last Chronicles of Planet Earth. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Let's get right into the news where I connect what the Lord said to watch for compared to what is actually taking place. And of course, if you just found my YouTube channel, I'd like you to go over to my website, www.endtimesresearchministry. And when you're there, you'll see a link for my book. Just click this link right here, the finger pointing to that link, and my book will download today for free for you. It's 30, almost 38 years of my life put into this book that proves facts, evidence, and documentation showing that in this generation the prophecies that the Lord told us to look for are coming to pass. So let's get right into the first one. Now in the Old Testament the prophet Zechariah was told by God in the last days there were certain things that we could look for specifically about Israel and Jerusalem. And take a look because we're, we're seeing these things taking place and a lot of the people around the world don't know the connection because they don't know the word of the Lord and they, in many cases they don't even have the news in third world countries. So they can't make the connection to what's going on. But Zechariah 12, 3, it says this, And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut into pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. So at the end of the day, everyone is going to be turning against Israel. That includes the United States of America. Now, President Barack Obama, no doubt, has been placed in office to fulfill, in part, this prophecy. Because over the past five years, Barack Obama has shown the world his disdain for Israel. Now, yes, indeed, he says that they are good friends. But what he does to Israel, it contradicts to what he actually says. And so the actions of a person are, are much more important than what somebody says about them the person. So I want to get into some news today because it's very, very important news. Now you'll see the headline, Israel fears Barack Obama's leading Mideast towards a catastrophe. And there's definitely a catastrophe that's coming. Now what catastrophe could it be? Well, obviously there are two wars that haven't been fulfilled yet. One of them is the Psalm 83 war, and you'll see all the participants that are going to be in this war in this photo here from 1 to 10. And of course, if you're brand new, just look to the left here and you'll see on the left-hand side the Old Testament names and then on the right-hand side exactly who they are. So, And we know that the nations are calling to eliminate or to wipe out Israel because it even tells us in Psalm 83, 4, you can see this highlighted in yellow. It says, and they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So, catastrophe could have come in the form of the Psalm 83. Very, very light. So, let's go back to this article. I'm going to pull up the article for you and let's examine what is being said here. And here is the article. And this is from the Economic Times talking about the Iranian problem here. Israel fears Barack Obama leading the Mideast towards catastrophe report. The Israeli political security establishment is increasing concern by American desire to reach a final deal with Iran regardless of the price, with some officials accusing U.S. President Barack Obama of leading the region towards a catastrophe, a media report said. It says, despite the differences, the formal channels of communication between Washington and Tel Aviv continue to exist. But Israeli officials believe that in the situation born out of the post-Geneva agreement, the Jewish state has pretty much lost its ability to influence Obama regarding Iran and other international issues, this Yainet News report stated. Now, so what we know is the communications are really breaking down. It's obvious. It even says it in here. The, the trust after what happened in the Geneva Agreement. Now, if you don't know what the Geneva Agreement is, last week, leaders, I believe it, four or five of the major leaders, world powers, went over Geneva to try to get Iran to comply with their wishes about holding back the uh, uranium 
enrichment uranium to, that would be able for the Iranians to build a nuclear bomb. And so the United States, along with these other leaders, what they did is they relieved some of the sanctions that were being pressed upon Iran for the past five years. Because in the past five years, Iran has said over and over again they're never going to stop their nuclear quest for a nuclear bomb. In hindsight, let me just say this before I go on any farther. Israel knows, as well as I know, Iran has no intention of ever stopping their quest to get a hold of a bomb. And all they're doing is buying more time like they did for the past five years. Uh, in other words, let's just say that we're going to do all these different things in this Geneva plan and then we'll have enough time well no matter what they say they can't do anything about it because we'll already have the material to make a bomb so that's the direction that not only is the United States allowed Iran to go into and these other nations allowed Iran to go into but we know there's going to be an outcome and that outcome obviously will be some kind of conflict between Israel and Iran because no one else is going to actually physically do anything to stop them. Now, in order to appease, I want to tie in another report, and you'll see why I'm bringing this up to you. This comes from the Depka file. Washington to stop wrangling with Israel instead offer embrace with benefits some military. President Barack Obama and the Secretary of State, John Kerry, have decided to put a stop in the role with Netanyahu government over the interim nuclear accord signed with Iran Sunday, November the 24th in Geneva. Now, the Depka Files exclusive Washington sources report partly because they need the Prime Minister's cooperation for bringing the peace process with the Palestinians to a resolution. On this, they are set. So, look at the thinking here by Barack Obama. He goes and makes this deal with Iran. Now that he's got this deal with Iran, he wants to go over to Israel and, you know, and say, comply with us so that we can get a peace process going or a peace plan finalized with the Palestinians. Now, there's been a lot of problems with this because the Palestinians who are in line with Iran, Israel knows that. So they're in bed with each other. So you have now the President of the United States going to Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, their Prime Minister, trying to get him to comply? This is crazy because at no time have the Palestinians ever recognized Israel as a nation and at no time have they stopped trying to get a hold of East Jerusalem as their capital for an independent Palestinian state. So what Barack Obama is doing is almost impossible. Now this section right here is pretty, pretty interesting. It says, as the U.S. official put it Tuesday night, November 26th, the administration has determined to embrace Netanyahu from now on. Instead of hitting back at his powerful castination of Washington's dealing with Tehran, the administration hopes to stop this flow of rhetoric by a package of measures which it hopes will allay Israel's concerns over the nuclear deal and the reproachment in progress between the U.S. and the Islamic Republic. Now, according to our sources, now this is where it gets really interesting, the package will include upgrading of Israeli Air Force capabilities with new offensive measures currently not in its possession. This upgrade, they say, will be influenced by the level of Iran's compliance or non-compliance with its obligations under the First Step Accord just signed with the six world powers and its readiness for progress towards a final comprehensive accord on its nuclear program. So, essentially what Barack Obama has done is he went over to Iran. He gave Iran more time, more leeway. 
like I said before. Then he turns back and he goes to Israel and he says, we're going to give you arms. Arms that if Iran does not comply, then you'll feel more or less comfortable with these new arms that you don't have. And then something can obviously be taking care of it. So if President Barack Obama is given these arms for assurance to the Israel, what do you think that he's actually saying? Well, if Iran doesn't do anything, we're going to give you the right arms to make an attack on Iran. And what happens here is you have Barack Obama stepping out of the picture and allowing Israel to do the dirty work that the United States doesn't want to do. And in the process, what would happen? Well, in the process of Israel taking arms that they don't have right now and attacking Iran, there would be a backlash against Israel, not only from the Iranians, but for the majority of the world as Israel is always looked at as the terrorist nation and the aggressor. While in reality, Israel, who got the arms from the United States, would just be doing what they would be naturally doing, defending their people, defending the country, making sure that Iran does never get this bomb to be used against Israel. And by the way, Israel, you should understand that the Iranians will never never possess a bomb that will wipe out all the Jews. It will never happen. We know this from scripture. Satan wants to destroy the nation of Israel. He's made attempts in the past, obviously, when Hitler was here and he killed 7 million Jews. That was one of the attempts. And there's going to be other attempts as the world moves in to the last day's prophecies. There's going to be another attempt in the Psalm 83 war that Israel is going to try, uh, or the, the nations that border Israel are going to try to wipe out the nation of Israel. We know this from the prophecy. So take a look again. We know this because this is what the Lord tells us in that prophecy. And they shall say, the, look at this, have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembered. So what Barack Obama has done actually is set up, if you will, a scenario for the next war. No doubt about it. And the Barack Obama could look clean. It could look like he, he's a peacemaker. Well, in fact, all, he's di all he has done is created the atmosphere for the next war. And I wanted everybody to see what, what was going on. So giving arms at the same time, you're, you're giving time to the Iranians. Now, for those of you who are new to Bible prophecy, not only does the Depka file talk about this military uh, equipment or whatever Obama is going to give to the Israelis to be used against the Iranians, but we also see the talk about the peace proce process here. And where Washington sources reported partially because they need the Prime Minister's cooperation for bringing the peace process. In other words, it appears that because Barack Obama is going to give him this military equipment, whatever it is, that arbitrarily the Prime Minister of Israel is going to say to Barack Obama, oh, thank you, Mr. President, and now I feel secure and we'll make peace with the enemies who don't want to recognize us. Come on. The President or the Prime Minister of Israel is not that dumb, Mr. President. And I believe that, again, a scenario is being developed and we know that that scenario will lead to war. And it will happen when? Well, obviously, you see, they're talking about the peace process here. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3, what does it say? Well, obviously, it says when they're calling for peace and safety, that's when the sudden destruction's coming. So we know that war is coming. We may not understand exactly the building blocks that are going to be used or the puzzle, how it's going to fit together perfectly to start the war, but we do know from the Lord the war is coming and we can see the footprints of that war. So giving, giving military equipment uh, is not going to stop Iran's quest for a nuclear bomb and obviously, I don't believe that a peace process will be 
uh, installed because Israel gets some new technology or whatever it is from the United States. But keep your eyes on the news. This is what the Lord said to watch for. When they're calling for peace and safety, sudden destruction comes. So just be good stewards and let us watch what's going to happen in the Middle East. Now, concerning the peace process, I need to make this connection for you, especially if you don't know Bible prophecy, because this is another major deal that is going to propel the world much, much closer to the Antichrist, and it has to do with the Temple Mount area. Now, over the years, the Jews have been kept completely out of this area. I mean, there have been some Jews that were able to go up, but they couldn't pray to the Temple Mount or pray at the Temple Mount, excuse me. And the, the Arabs who were installed back in 1967, who had control over the Temple Mount, over the years, they have done whatever they can to keep the Jews away from the Dome of the Rock, which is the third most holiest site for the Muslim. But over the years, we have seen, and I've put this in my book, I've seen the progress leading to the third temple that's going to be rebuilt. This is the one that Jesus talks about. This is the one that we see in the Old Testament. And I'll connect the dots for you there. But first of all, let's take a look at what the Word says. In Daniel 9.27, it says this, and this is talking about the Antichrist, and he shall confirm a covenant. The he is the Antichrist. It's a real person. It's going to be a man who will come from the revived Roman Empire. He's going to confirm the covenant. It doesn't say that he's going to make this. He's just going to confirm it. Confirm the covenant with many for one week, and the week here is a period of seven years, and of course, this would be the last seven years of the prophecy that we see in the book of Revelation. And after the seven-year period of time, at the end of the tribulation, that is when Jesus Christ will make his entry into Jerusalem again at the end of the tribulation. And in the midst of the week, in other words, in the middle of this seven-year period of time, this Antichrist is going to do what? Exactly three and a half years into the seven years, and because it says in the midst of the week, he, now talking about the Antichrist, shall cause the sacrifice and obligation, excuse me, to cease. In other words, the Jews are going to build another temple in this area, on the Temple Mount. And they've been practicing, I've put a couple up now, a couple of videos showing how they are uh, actually demonstrating how they're killing for sacrifices, the killing the animals for sacrifices. They did it last year and they did it again this year preparing the way for their sacrifices and this is exactly what the, the scriptures warn about in daniel 9 27 he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease in other words he's going to stop the jews from making their sacrifices in the temple in the temple mount, on the temple mount where the third temple is going to be built and for the overspreading of abomination, he shall make desolate even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So the Antichrist is going to come. There has to be uh, a third temple built. What does this tell you? If a third temple is built, that means that the Jews are going to have full access to this area. And we're starting to see now the prelude, the events that are going to give permission for the Jews to go on the Temple Mount. Now, Jesus even talks about it in Matthew chapter 24, 15, where he says this, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel. So look at this. Jesus refers to Daniel's writings, which we just read in Daniel 9, 27. Now, Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place. Now, what's the holy place? Obviously, it's going to be that third temple. Whosoever readeth, let him understand. So do we understand? You better believe it. We have the Holy Spirit who is teaching us, giving us knowledge about anything that we need about the Lord, about things to come, things that were. God is a, a, a great teacher, and he has sent the Comforter to give us understanding about these things. Now, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, again, Jesus talks to Paul. Paul writes about this man of sin. 
he says this, who opposes and exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he, again, the Antichrist, as God, so the Antichrist is going to make himself as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So there you go, you have three scriptures showing the man of sin and the Antichrist will be incarnated by Satan who will be sitting in the temple that will be built. So is there any connection to what we see? Obviously it is. I'm going to bring up an article for you, and let's examine that article. And this is from the Washington Post. The Jewish activists want to pray on the Jerusalem's Temple Mount, raising alarm in the Muslim world. Now, this is, again, another scenario that could launch the Psalm 83 war, the first war. Psalm 83 will come first, and then the Ezekiel war. And if the Jews, let's put it this way, when the Jews uh, want to build their temple or start marching or allowing the Jews in large numbers to migrate up to the Temple Mount to pray, man, that would ignite the Muslim world to, world to attack Israel with no question. Let's take a look at what they say here. A small but growing movement by the Jewish activists demanding the right to pray at the site of their destroyed temple in the heart of this disputed capital's old city is creating a potentially explosive clash with the Muslim world which considers the spot holy and bans the Jews from public worship there. Now each week hundreds of Jews ascend to the creaky wooden ramp built above the western wall and entered what is often called the most contested real estate on the earth and you're not kidding and again this area has caused the Middle East peace talks to fall apart or to stall Barack Obama is trying to get it on tra track again but it's almost impossible because the ownership of this city and it goes right back to Zechariah 12 3 again you burden yourselves over Jerusalem you'll be cut into pieces so not good for the United States but let's go on. Many then embark upon a game of hide and seek with their police escorts, whispering forbidden prayers while pretending to talk into the cell phones and getting a quick but banned bows by dropping coins and then bending to pick them up. Their proposals, long dis dismissed as extremists, are now being debated by the Israeli parliament and embraced by the ex expansionist wing in the ruling coalition government of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. So, let's back up for a second just to paint the picture. You have over the years Iran and you know, all the rest of these Islamic nations including all the states around the nation of Israel, the Islamic people trying to keep the Jews away from the Temple Mount. And over the years the Jews have made progress to the point right now while they have people in the government now actually sitting as leaders who are pushing the agenda to get the Jews to be able to go and have access on the Temple Mount and this has caused the hearts of most of the people who worship Islam around the world to flutter and I mean really flutter now these political leaders, many in Netanyahu's party, want Israel to assert more, not less, control of the West Bank and East Jerusalem and the Old City, including the place known to the Jews as the Temple Mount and to the Muslims as the Haram al-Sharif or the Noble Sanctuary. So. Again, political leaders, and this is what I'd like you to do is remember what I'm telling you here because you're going to hear a lot more news about this. I've been warning about this for a long time. I've been seeing the progress, and by the way, all of the progress is noted in my book. I give you a timeline for this prophecy, and I show you what has happened in the past, uh, what's happening right now and how the road is being paved to get the Jews up to the Temple Mount area and eventually to build their, their temple. 
It says, we're looking for it to be divided between the Jews and the Muslims. Of course, what you know, it seems good. But if the Muslims don't ever give up their grips on this area, then there's going to have to be some kind of forceful move. And any forceful move by the Israelis would cause what? It would cause, obviously, it would cause war. Now, the chairman of the Temple Mount organizations, which claims 27 groups under its umbrella. And today, Jews realize the Western Wall is not enough. And they want to go to the real thing. And then it talks about when the temple was destroyed. And of course, we know from Jesus, he prophesied about the temple being destroyed and not one stone would be laid upon another. And that's exactly what happened uh, when Titus, the Roman, went in. He sent his legions in there and they burned the temple mount area and the gold of the in the building ran down the stones and after everybody was killed Titus uh, gave the order to scrape all the, the gold off the stone and when it was all over with not one stone rested upon another and Jesus prophecy was fulfilled so it goes on to say the same courtyard is home to the al Mosque, one of the oldest in Islam, and that the Dome of the Rock, the golden landmark where the tradition says that the Prophet Muhammad made his night journey to heaven. And for the Palestinians and much of Muslim world, any mention of changing the status quo at the site, the third holiest in Islam, is in a scenario. Now what does that mean? Setting on fire. What does that mean? War. So if the Jews keep persisting and the leaders in the, the Knesset persist on the Jews gaining access like the Muslims have, you can count on war. This is what I want you to keep in mind because we know from the scriptures, as I pointed out here, that there is going to be a Temple Mount. Now, is it going to come as a result of war? Or is it going to come as a result of peace? That's a good question. Now, I believe what will happen is that there is going to be the Psalm 83 war. Whatever starts that war, it could be the breakdown of the peace process, bringing out this sudden destruction that Paul warned about in 1 Thessalonians. And that the breakdown in that peace process could cause the Psalm 83 war. And... Obviously, what would happen is the allies who are friends with all the nations, as you see all of them in here, the allies of all the nations are who? It is the nations that do not border Israel, but it would be the nations that are listed in the Ezekiel 38 war of which Russia will lead Iran into battle with Turkey and Libya and some of these other nations. So we can see how things could come together in the puzzle. And I can't tell you for sure how it's going to come, but we see the, the footstones to these wars. And as I said, the breakdown of the peace process in East Jerusalem, ownership of this area and allowing the Jews to go on, it could cause a war that may start the Psalm 83 war. So keep in mind when you're watching the news, I'm going to bring it up at my site when it happens, because it is going to happen. God's word will be fulfilled. There is a man coming. He is the Antichrist. He will stop the sacrifices that Israel has already begun to practice. And by the way, look it, look it up, Google it, Israel practicing sacrifices. Uh, they are doing this, and it's just one giant step. They know eventually they're going to be worshiping on that Temple Mount. They have the faith. Now, it's sad to understand that the Jews, even though they're going to be getting their sacrifices again, they do not recognize the Messiah, Jesus Christ, who told them, that they were going to essentially do these things again. We see this in Daniel, Thessalonians, and from Matthew. So 
even though they have access, they're going to have full access to this Temple Mount area, they do not see Christ as their Messiah. But eventually, we know from the Word that they will understand that the Messiah that they rejected was really their Messiah and that they will be weeping over this. So Israel is going to have to go through really, really hardships during the tribulation as they reject the voice of the Holy Spirit, showing them that obviously Jesus Christ was the fulfillment of the prophecies. So we need to be praying for the Jewish people, praying for the peace of Jerusalem, because the only time that Jerusalem will have peace is when Jesus Christ comes, walks through the east gate, and takes a thousand-year reign in the city of Jerusalem. Now let's move on to another prophecy. I wanted to show you this one. Christ told us that there was going to be diseases in the last days. These are one of many of the prophecies he told us to look for. You'll see this in Matthew 24, 7, where he mentions the nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and I highlighted pestilence or disease, and earthquakes in diverse places. Now, one of the, again, one of the things that I've been warning about is looking for mutated diseases, diseases that will jump from birds to humans or uh, animals to humans and so forth. And again, all of this information is listed in my book. I've been showing you how things uh, are advancing, how diseases are mutating and people around the world are being affected. Now, it was very interesting. I'm going to bring this article up to you. And this is from South China Morning Post, December the 3rd, that is today's news, Hong Kong's first case of H7N9 bird flu virus confirmed. Uh, this is not good news. It says the deadly H7N9 bird flu virus has arrived in Hong Kong. It was confirmed last night in the city activated its flu contingency plan after an Indonesian domestic worker who recently traveled to Sanjin was found to have contracted the deadly, look at this, new strain, the first case in a city. Uh, this was a 36-year-old patient, and there were, when you read the rest of this article, you'll see that there was four people around him or her, and uh, they have the flu-like symptoms. So that is something to watch for because if there was ever a pandemic with this disease, it would be, it would definitely be bad. And we know that diseases are going to come, and we know that the max, the the climax to the diseases when they come will be uh, seen in the tribulation period when all the the plagues. And the vials and the bowls are poured out, and all these signs reach their max. Now, in speaking about diseases that are coming, we've seen, let me go over to it. I did post this a while back. This was in November, November the 26th, and again, it was updated on the 27th. And it talks about the 8th Princeton meningitis case confirmed. Meningitis is really, really serious it's uncommon type b strain and again you know when you start to see that these things are uncommon or we haven't seen this strain or they mutate these things are birth pain signs the lord told us in mark 13 8 that the end times would be as a woman with birth pains and we're seeing this these different reports that are coming up more and more and they're outlined in my book it says an eighth case of Bacterial meningitis at the Princeton University has been confirmed as being from the type B strain. Now this, again, for most of you, probably is going to be old news. But there has been another college who's been nailed with the same thing. So take a look. This comes from Fox News. And again, this is today's news. The fourth student contracts meningitis at UC Santa Barbara. It says authorities say that the four students have come down with meningitis at the University of California, Santa Barbara, where an outbreak of the bacterial illness cost 
one undergraduate, both his feet. That's how serious this disease is. And it starts off, again, like you saw in the other article, like flu symptoms. So if you're watching this video and you're around a campus that there is meningitis being reported, it is good advice to make sure you know the symptoms. You can Google the symptoms for meningitis and just keep aware of the symptoms in case you have more people coming down with meningitis. And if you see these symptoms, you may want to make an appointment with your doctor just in case. It's better to be on guard than to let this thing go or to be ignorant altogether of the signs. So let's move on to another prophecy. Now, before I get into this prophecy, I need to show you what the Lord said about dealing with Israel. In Genesis 12:3, and this is the King James Version, it says this, And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curse thee, and in thee all the families of the earth be blessed. And anyone who blesses Israel will be blessed. Anybody who curses Israel is going to be what? They're going to be cursed. God is going to curse them. Now, there are other places in the Bible that shows you what happens when you deal with Israel wrongly. We saw one in Zechariah 12.3. The other one is in Joel chapter 3, verse 2, where the Lord will lead those people who come down against Israel and try to divide Israel. He's going to lead them to destruction. So it's really important to understand what the Lord says. Now, if you don't believe it, and you want to go against Israel, I guess that you're just going to have to learn the hard way. Now let me show you, in my book, I have a list of different events that have taken place. Let me show you here, uh, a list of events, leaders who come against Israel, what happens? Natural disasters that come against the nations that come against Israel. All right, so let's take a look. This is from November the 21st, 2013. This is the leader, Khomeini is the leader, the supreme leader, the highest leader in Iran. So Khomeini, description of Israel as rabid dogs, shows Iran still a threat, Netanyahu says. And Foreign Minister Lieberman says, Iran using the rhetoric of Goebbels and Hitler shows it is seeking nuclear weapons. And this is what I've been discussing for a very, very long time at my website, warning the people that there's going to be an end result and that end result will be war. Now, keep in mind, this was November the 21st. Now, going back to the article, it says, Israel leaders have lashed out at Iran's top leader, Hayatollah al-Khamenei, for describing Israel as rabbit dogs in a speech on Wednesday. The Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu flew to Russia on Wednesday to lobby to tougher terms in the negotiations over Iran's nuclear program. Said Khamenei's comments showed Iran has not changed since the... Uh, Relative moderate Hassan Ranani was elected as the president in June. He calls Jews the rapid dogs and said that they were not human. Not good to be talking like this about God's chosen people. Now, the public responded to him with calls of death to America, death to Israel. So when you say things like this, you curse Israel, something is going to happen to you. Now, I'm just going to stop it right there. Now, keep in mind that they're talking about the nuclear weapons problem between the, the Israelis and Iran. And you're going to see something that I think is very, very interesting. November the 21st, Ayatollah Khomeini talking of, you know, smack about Israel. As you can see, this is the news from CNN. At least eight dead, dozens hurt in quake in southern Iran. Now the hand of God, no doubt, as I look at everything that I have learned from the news in relation to the dates that 
nations come against Israel and then watching the disasters that follow, I know without a doubt that God's hand has again lashed out at somebody who has cursed the nation of Israel. And But this is very, very significant. Within a week's time, there was a an earthquake in Iran that killed at least eight people. Here's some a picture of at least one of the pictures of the rubble that fell down in Iran in his territory. Now look at take a look at this because you're gonna find this interesting. An earthquake shook the southern Iran Thursday evening near the nuclear power plant, killing at least eight people and injuring fifty nine more. This came from the FARS News Agency. Let's go down here. It says, the U.S. Geological Survey said a 5.6 magnitude quake centered about 39 miles northwest of the Persian Gulf city, Bashar, where the nuclear power plant is located. So here you have Iran calling Israel dogs over the dispute of the Bashar nuclear power plant and one week later, God sends an earthquake to the very place that is in dispute against Iran and the nuclear site. This is a warning to Iran. And I'm praying that Iran's leaders or the people in Iran start to understand what's happening as they continue to curse Israel. Now, when is the full impact of Iran's uh, cursing going to come to fruition? Well, obviously, if you know anything about Bible prophecy, let me show you. Now, what I did is I brought you over to my site in one of my posts that I talked about the Ezekiel 38 war. And as long as I'm here, just let me let you understand it. When you're at my site, if you see the F and the YouTube and the N, you'll be able to click these and go over to Facebook, my YouTube, and these other places that my posts are available for you. But this is a map of the Ezekiel chapter 38 war, of which Iran, as you can see here, is in the Old Testament Persia. They're going to be playing a role, as I said, with Russia, who will be coming down to try to wipe out the nation of Israel, right? So when we're looking at the events that are leading Iran right now about this nuclear weapons deal, uh, we know that eventually what will happen, that the curse will catch up fully with Iran and anybody else who's coming against Israel and all of these nations uh, who hate Israel now and Russia has semi-relations, but really, in the, in the deepness of Russia, they are allied with all these people in the darkness, and they too will find the full impact of God's curse in Ezekiel chapter 38, where five-sixths of all of these armies that come against Israel are going to be wiped out. Now, let me say this as I conclude this video. There are many people out there who maybe for the first time that the Holy Spirit has softened your heart and you want to receive the Messiah as your Savior. Maybe that the Holy Spirit spoke to you today to show you that some of the things that maybe other people have already told you that you rejected, now is the, in time, God's timing, that now is the time of the day of your salvation. Now is the day that you can have your name placed in God's book, book of life, in ensuring, ensuring your stay in heaven for eternity with Jesus Christ. And so if this is the case, just bow your head before Jesus Christ and ask him to forgive you of all your sins. Ask him to be your savior. Ask him to lead you and to teach you. Ask him to be the advocate that you need to enter into the kingdom of God. And as you make a commitment to Jesus Christ in recognizing that Jesus is the Messiah, recognizing that he went to the cross for your sins and my sins, and also recognizing that there was nothing going to keep him from rising from the dead so that we may have life with Christ in heaven. And believing that he rose on the third day, believing that you too 
will rise even though that you die someday if we are not raptured before that happens. And so our faith is based on hope in Christ, hope that he is going to always be with us. He told us that he will never forsake us. And you can have that assurance today of salvation for eternity in Christ by giving your life over to Christ. If you've made that commitment to Jesus, please email me and let me know, and I'll do whatever I can to help you on your new road with Jesus. And if you make a commitment today, know this, that it won't be an easy commitment because the enemy is going to want to come after you. He's going to want to stop you from committing your life completely over to Jesus. And more than, more than cases than that, your life will have more difficulty because you're going to be living for Christ. And Satan will want to stop you from doing that. But the Holy Spirit will be with you and encourage you and give you strength. And as long as you're abiding in Christ, you can't lose. This is Frank DeMora from the End Times Research Ministry saying, Today is a good day to enter into the paradise of God with your name written in his book. God bless.